Hello, my dear viewer. It's been a little while. It's been almost like a month since I uploaded a video. Uh, I've just been streaming non-stop over at twitch.tv slash prismaticadev. Make sure you check it out if you want to learn more. In that time, I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, so I thought today I'm going to show off my Prismatica TM Simpler Grass Wind TM, uh, which is my replacement for the Unreal Engine stock Simple Grass Wind, you know, material function, which we all love and hate. This ends up being cheaper as well, and I think it also looks a lot better. So we're going to get stuck straight into it. Fantastic. Here we are. We're in a scene. Uh, as you can see, I've got my, my wind functioning. Um, and you can probably tell that it's... It kind of goes in waves. So to do this, we're not actually using any textures. We're just using sine waves. Um, you can see that it works on all of the... The bushes and stuff as well. Uh, there's a little bit of vertex color time distortion that makes it kind of a bit jigglier rather than being pretty rigid. Um, and we don't get that kind of weird circular back and forth that you get with the uh, with a stock grass wind. Uh, we can also like pump up the values a bit. So this is like pretty strong wind. This is it nice and gentle, very subtle. And then if we pump it up, we start to get some real, some real, uh, real juicy stuff. Um, now this is more focused towards stylized um, scenes and stuff because we do actually end up stretching the vertices a bit, uh, which I think looks fantastic. Um, but if you're doing something more realistic, then you could probably do this same thing, except instead of offsetting them in world space, um, you could rotate them about axis. That would save you the stretching at least. Uh, but I like the stretching. So how does this actually work? Well, Great question. I've set up a few bushes um, with a new material on it. This is what we're going to be kind of dissecting. Um, you can see this is the output of the world position offset as color. Um, and you can kind of see some, some pretty trippy patterns going on. So a lot of this effect actually revolves around the, uh, as I've commented it, random ass wiggle jiggle schmiggle in random directions uh, so if we actually take this and we put this into the world position offset let's actually just give this a, a normal color if we have a look here you can see that these bushes are just like wiggling in in random directions um or jiggling and you know we put this up a bit just make it a bit stronger then you can really see that yeah we've got some truly random wiggle going on uh, just in completely random directions. Uh, it's like a micro jiggle. So we just get time. We multiply it by big number. Um, and then we get the world position. We multiply it by different amounts in each axis, um, just so it's not completely uniform. And then we add time to that. And then we chuck that through a little sine wave uh, with a period of 50. And then this determines the output strength of that. And so this is like, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's literally just, you know, some random jiggle um, in random directions. And what we end up doing with this jiggle is we use wind waves. So let's pretend this is a wave. I mean, it literally is a wave. Um, and, you know, we've got overlapping ones, but we'll just ignore that for now. And we want to basically say when we reach a threshold that's when we want to reveal the jiggle. We want to reveal the jiggle when it's, you know, like a high pressure wind wave. Uh, and that's kind of how we get the nice variation in the material and stuff. So let's actually pump the jiggle up to like, I don't know, five or something, something a bit crazy. You'll see that now we kind of just have these waves of jiggles uh, going through our, our bushes. Um, it's pretty obvious to see here because I've pumped it up to, well, five times. <laughs> And so the way we actually generate these waves is with time. Um, and we do a few distortions to, to time itself. Uh, we do one in the Z axis just so 
like all of the the leaves on a tree aren't moving like this they kind of move like this like up and down the tree and then we also do a distortion by the vertex color which kind of again instead of things going like this um it makes them kind of go like this so you can imagine my arm is painted from zero to one and this is moving like this but then when we subtract vertex color so we subtract one from time this will appear one second behind this part of my arm and that's how we kind of get this waving effect so we get our time plus distortions uh, so this is all of our time any oh, anything coming out of this node here is time um, you could do this super super simple just with time like this and we might actually do that for now so we're just going to plug time straight into here we're going to ignore all of the distortions for now it'll just be a lot easier to visualize the the wind waves uh, we're going to be using only four waves and the reason we're using four waves is because we can pack that into a single float four funnily enough we're going to determine the direction that this is going in so mine will flow towards world origin um, but if you wanted yours to flow in a particular wind direction this is how I would recommend doing it it's a little bit jank but it works uh, so we basically take a position of 1 million in the in the red direction or the x direction uh, and then we we still do what I do which is calculate the distance from the current position or the, you know the world position of the shader to the world origin point except this time we're doing it a million units you know in the x direction and then we can actually rotate that based on a thingo so if we have a look at this you know we can we can switch between them um you know we have all our different directions and, and that kind of stuff uh, and they all go at the same speed which is the the reason that we end up doing it this way uh, in order to kind of change the direction of the wind at runtime you might have to have two sets of these waves um, calculating, which is probably the cheapest part of this entire thing. So you'd have something like this and this. Uh, if I can fit this in here. Uh, if we want to put the that into number one, this into number B. I'm going to alert between them. Let's just say this one has a completely different rotation. And if I lerp between them, you can see that our wind changes direction smoothly. Um, so now it's going this way. And now ooh, I can kind of do, you probably want to avoid going halfway in between because it isn't actually changing the direction. It's just lerping between the two sets of waves. And now that I've shown you how to do that, we'll actually go under the assumption for the rest of the video that you, you want your wind to have, you know, a specified direction. So each float in this, this four vector is its own wave. So the R number or the R value in each of these is, it's referring to the same wave. So the R value of this determines wave one's relative speed. Then we have the, you know, wavelength. The first value is the first wave's wavelength. You get the idea. This determines the relative speed of our wave. So speed to one another. Mine is set at 240, 218, 176, and 144. You kind of want to have numbers that don't line up very often. Um, so like prime numbers and you know weird odd numbers is kind of what you want to go for then this is the wave length again we choose some random values i've got 1277 500 137 and 67 then we have the wave pressure offset so a sine wave usually dips above and below zero the peaks being one the troughs being negative one but by offsetting them we essentially shift this line here and so by doing this we're saying okay well the the troughs here they're only going to be negative 0.25 and these are going to be 1. I don't know 75 um, so that way they're not actually going to blow backwards 
very much. They're always going to kind of just get blown in this direction. They will, you know, if we allow them to, depending on how much we offset them, um, they will go back slightly, but most of the time they're going to get blown in the direction of the wind. So that's, that's what the offset is for. Uh, and if we didn't have any offset, they would blow just as much backwards as they do forwards, which would look kind of whack. And then lastly, but not leastly, the amplitude of each wave. So this is kind of like the amplitude slash strength, I guess. So we're going to get the R, G, and B values, and we're going to add them all together. And then we're going to do some math to it so that we can use this as a mask for our random jiggler. Um, so only when, you know, some of these are overlapping or when it reaches a certain strength, that's when we want to do the jiggle. So we're going to have an offset value. Uh, I've just hard coded mine in because, you know, after toying around with it, if you make something a constant value, it'll actually be cheaper than running it as a, uh, as a parameter or a variable. Uh, and then the multiplier here. And so we actually have a look at these jiggling then we can actually play with these in real time so we can say okay well maybe we only want them you know when they're this strong to start jiggling the the foliage or maybe we want them to jiggle it all the time or whatever whatever uh, and this also determines the the hardness of the jiggle uh, and then we can obviously make it you know softer so it's a, a bit more nice looking uh, another thing that i add here is uh, affecting the minimum jiggle when the wind is, you know, higher. Um, so I'm using a material parameter collection for that. But if, for example, we said, okay, let's um, let's put the wind up, you can see that even the bits that aren't in the high pressure waves start to jiggle uh, as like a minimum. So this mask here goes down and gets multiplied by that jiggle stuff. And so if we take our jiggle mask and we just kind of move it out the way, um, you can see that we also take the sum of the first three waves. We add that to the fourth smallest wave um, multiplied by this mask. So it's like a multiply add, which is a very useful thing to be able to do. And so this one here, it's kind of acting like a little jiggle as well, uh, except in the direction of the wind. And then the final piece of the puzzle is to choose which direction our wind actually affects the foliage in. So what we will do is we will get the output of here. We're going to go into a lerp, just a regular old lerp. Um, we're going to get the bit out of here. This is pre-distance calculation because um, we're just trying to get the actual axis or the actual direction let's just get a copy of our parameter we're just going to rename this um wind lerp i guess uh, and then this is going to go all the way over to here and we're going to normalize it uh, and i don't think you'll actually need to negate that so we're just going to normalize that and then we're going to multiply that by our waves um, so if we add all that together, we put it in, you can see that, if I just turn that jiggle down a bit, then you can see that we're actually blowing back and forth in the wind. Uh, in, in the direction of the wind is the important thing. And so we take that, we add that to the random jiggle stuff that we created. Uh, then we just have some final multipliers, uh, one for the actual wind intensity and one for the wind affectation. So you might want some bits of foliage to be more affected by wind than others. So if we chuck this up now, you can see we're getting some, some stuff. Um, now the final piece of this puzzle is the time distortion stuff from before, and we're going to use that as the input to our waves. Now you can see it's getting pretty, pretty wildin'. Uh, and then lastly, but not leastly, you will need to multiply this by your vertex color. I don't do this in the function. I do this outside of the function. But this is obviously one of the most important things to do. Um, so now if we multiply it by our vertex color, you can see that it's only doing it on the, you know, the vertex painted parts of the foliage. So usually you would paint this zero at the bottom, 
which means that because we're multiplying it by vertex color, the bottoms of our foliage bits aren't being affected, and then one at the at the tips or at the top, uh, which means that you know they are getting affected, and so that's how we kind of get our our blowing in the wind effect. And so if we take our wind lerp value here and we you know we go between them, you can see that we can change the direction of the wind quite nicely. Uh, it's not perfect, but, you know, if you do it slow enough, I don't think anyone's going to notice. So there we go. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope that you learned something. I will be uh, kind of refining this little function and I'll put it in a paste bin so that you guys can, you know, use it in your own projects and stuff. Uh, it'll be down the very bottom of the description of the video. Obviously some of these parameters aren't going to make it to your end like the material function inputs and material parameter collections and stuff like that. I'll put comments around it so that you know what needs to go where and that kind of thing. So feel free to use this in your own projects um, as a replacement for the you know the stock standard unreal simple grass wind. And I do think it just looks overall a bit more a bit more nice, a bit less uniform, a bit less kind of... You know what I mean? That's that's what the, the Unreal Simple Grass Wind looks like, yeah, in my eyes at least. <laughs> if you do want more content more often, I do stream most days of the week on twitch.tv slash prismaticadev, which is always linked in the description, so if you do have spare time you know it's always worth checking that out you can get notifications for it and that kind of thing if you want and lastly but not leastly if you do want to support this channel and the tutorials and prismatic of the game you can do so for as little as one dollar per month through our patreon which is linked below so a huge shout out to all the existing patrons um even though i haven't posted in you know a month you guys are still still coming in still being freaking awesome uh, and i really appreciate all the support so i guess with that we say goodbye goodbye <laughs>